Howdy once again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, and this time with episode number 47 of my This and That series, and I have a lot of things to show you. Let's start out with this Powermatic 14-inch woodcutting bandsaw given to me by Matt Krug at Lost Creek Machinery, and I'll put his website down at the bottom, so check out his website. He just has a lot of machinery, and he's a good guy, and he gave this to me, and I'll tell you why. Now you may have watched several of my videos where I converted Rockwell bandsaws into metal cutting and it wasn't very successful. So Matt gave me this older model and it really is almost not saleable and that's why he gave it to me. It just needs an awful lot of work. But my plans in a future video series will be to convert this into a metal cutting saw it needs new uh, tires, blade guides, and many other things. Let me take the shrink wrap off. Let's have a real quick look at this. There you can see 14 inch wheels, but there are no rubber tires on it. That wheel has probably been changed because it's the more modern gold color that uh, they now use at Powermatic. But these are very heavy machines compared to the Delta. Notice that this is all cast iron up here. So I suspect this will be a very rigid frame. And this machine was available in uh, several different models, but one of them was combination wood and metal, and that's why you see really what amounts to a gearbox case there but is not uh, used. Now Matt didn't even know if this machine had a motor in it but it does we had it on the side it's got a motor on it and why they took the switch off of the base and moved it up onto the top I don't know but there's been a lot of minor modifications so this is going to be quite a job to get this thing up and running and then try to slow it down and that's what it will be all about and in the other videos you see that I use several different methods for that but I'd like to find a little transmission like you would use in a garden tractor and and slow it down but thank you to Matt and Lost Creek Machinery for this and you know, you'll be seeing more of this but probably quite a bit down the line and while I'm still out in the cold garage let's have a quick look I've set up a little studio here in addition to what I have in the basement but in this area I have the closing horizontal mill and I'm getting ready to make a video on grinding centers on the atlas lathe so that's really in my studio with the backdrop and the lighting and all of that and uh, various machines can be moved in and out of that position for instance I had that south bend lathe in that position just a few days ago and in the foreground is the coveted uh, 7 inch South Bend Shaper and I hope to get to making videos on that very soon now that the weather is moderating but it's still only 50 degrees in here today and it's May 4th so that's Illinois weather for you alright let's go down the basement and show you a few other things all right, I'm down in the basement shop now, and I have several things to show you that people have sent to me over the last six weeks or so. Do you remember Chuck from the Detroit area who gave me the uh, closing mill? Well, he sent me a box, and it cost $20 to ship this, $19.95, of aluminum. He said, for a future project, there you go. Put it on the shelf sooner or later. You'll have a use for it. That's quite a chunk. Thank you, Chuck. I got a nice box from Lewis Howard. He's down in Lubbock, Texas. And some of these items are for my what is it, so I'm not going to show you that. But in the box are two nice cans, and that's tin can, of uh, chock full of nuts coffee. He thought, Lewis thought I was getting kind of blase and without energy and lackadaisical, so he thought I needed some revving up, so... Uh, I'll soon be drinking some of that and uh, thank you Lewis in this box sent to me by Cliff Earls and thank you Cliff he sent me uh, what is it which I'll show in another video but he sent me this hammer that is homemade he did a beautiful job on it uh, it's tubing that has been 
welded and then there are wooden plugs that are replaceable so it's a soft type hammer and I'm not sure how he did this but it's round right here and then he's flattened it so it's got a nice feel to it and I don't know how he rolled that edge but it's just a very nice job and then he hot blued it or was it cold blue he sent the letter along too so he said it will rust so I, I was going to paint it but I do like the color so I, maybe I'll put some of that bow shield on there and so that's a nice soft hammer for assembly purposes thank you very much Cliff in one of my videos I lamented the fact that I didn't have any three-quarter inch square aluminum well next thing you know I get a package in the mail and it's from uh, Vernon Courier who has a website not website a channel and he calls himself mature patriot so check that out but uh, thank you for sending this aluminum and that'll come in handy I'll put it in stock but also the following day he sent something else he knows I like stare tools so in this rather large box is a tiny item and it's a pen clip or a pencil clip quite old and it's marked with the Starrett logo. He said maybe that would work on one of my uh, scribers and possibly it will. Thank you Vernon. Perhaps some of you watched this recent video where I went to visit uh, John Mortland and he showed me that beautiful locomotive. Anyway while I was there he's got a small shop in his garage. He's out on a farm and he gave me a couple of uh, pieces of brass quarter inch by two inch by different lengths and uh, that will go into future projects. So I'm getting some nice stock. And then you recall that I had several videos on uh, Bernard pliers. So the smaller pliers was given to me by uh, Harry. I'm having a little trouble with the last name there but he's out in Connecticut so there's a, a smaller plier, a little, little bit smaller than what I usually have, and it's a genuine Bernard, but you can compare it in size here, so I thank you for that, Harry. Did any of you watch this recent video of mine? And if you did, you will recall that I made this die holder that will fit into the tailstock of a lathe, and it's hexagon. And I struggled a little bit with that, but I started out by talking about holding a hexagon die in a 12-point socket with a little extension. Well, then in the mail from uh, Harold Patton, and he's out in Indiana, he sends me a nice Armstrong half-inch drive 6.1-inch socket, so that would serve that purpose very well. And this die does not go in any farther than that. It bottoms out, which is far better than this uh, socket. So there's another way of doing that. Thank you. I think all of you out there know Randy Richard in the shop and he sent me his latest creation about a month ago or so. Yet another variation on Scribers. Hexagon. He knows I like the hexagon. It won't roll off my unlevel bench. Carbide Scriber and my name as well as his engraved are, are in the shop. USA. Lyle Tubalcane. Thank you Randy and I will see Randy at the bash this summer. He's my guide. My chaperone. And I think you remember that there's a series of other scribers, and there's a couple others on the bench here that are in use. I was going to put this in here, but I think it's a little bit too long for me to close it. But uh, that might be the one that I reach for, because it's got a very fine point. So that's a nice addition. Brass. Ed Young from up in Westmont, Illinois, and that's a suburb of Chicago. I'm not sure exactly where it is. He's been a big supporter of mine, giving me donations and... Uh, uh, both monetary and in items. He gave me that nice Simpson meter several years ago, so you may remember that. But he sent me 25 pounds of books. He asked if I wanted some books. So, well, you know, I never turn books down, but let's go through these. And I thank you, Ed, ever so much. Here's an older book 
Boston gears. These are good references for gears and pulleys and things like that. There's just a lot of good information in these old Boston books. And he sent me what is virtually a brand new, I think that's the latest edition, edition of Machinery's Handbook with the thumb index. Never been used, just in perfect shape. So I'm glad to have the latest edition. I think 24 or 25 it was the most recent one that I had. And here's a nice Sterrett catalog in perfect condition from the early 50s. I like looking through these old catalogs. He knows I struggle with electric motor, so he's giving me a hint here. Electric motor test and repair. Brand new. Wiring simplified. I've got that book, but it's only about half that, that thick, so this has got to be a greatly, uh, well, larger edition, latest edition, 44th. And here is Dave Gingrey's, Dave Gingrey's book on the metal lathe, and that, of course, is a Lindsay. No, it was sold through Lindsay. I wouldn't call it a Lindsay reprint, but here are several others by Dave Gingrey, also the milling machine, the drill press, and the dividing head, and these books tell how to make these items, step by step. Here's a Fowler catalog. I had no idea that Fowler had that large of a catalog and that many items. I just thought they sold a few micrometers and rulers, but that's very extensive and interesting to look through. Ed knows that I like steam engines, so he sent me this three volume set of Steam and Sterling books. I think this is number one, but they don't call it number one. It was just the first one in their volume two and volume three. And these give step by step instructions on building beautiful model engines. With working drawings. Here is a book spiral bound with drawings and so on for steam engines. And a copy in virtually perfect condition called Machine Tool Practices. This is a textbook. There are the authors of the machine shop. Very nice book. Thank you, Ed. Mike Hinman, or Heinman, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, from the great state of Georgia, must have watched my video where I went downtown to buy some number 12 three wire and I couldn't get it. So he sent me what well, looks like it's probably 25 feet, I didn't actually measure it, of very heavy duty 12 three wire rubber covered. So that's going to be beautiful for one of my projects here in the shop. It already has a plug on one end, but uh, that, that's going to be handy. That's expensive stuff, and he also sent a bunch of items here, which I'm not going to show you really at this time for my What Is It series, but to get good rubber cord is not easy. I got, I struck out when I went to Ace Hardware. Now, in a, so thank you, Mike. In a recent video about pliers, I said uh, something disparaging about uh, these items from uh, Pakistan, and I was promptly and rudely corrected, saying, no, they make the greatest stuff. Well, I think the reason I had a bad impression of them is I like to cut my nails with clippers rather than those horrible little 25 centers from the dime store, which uh, when you put them in your pocket, the coins get stuck in them, you know. Well, this one is from... Pakistan. It's beautiful looking. Nice finish. It's stainless steel. It's, but I even mark do not use because when I use this on my nails, it doesn't cut my nails off. It crimps them off. And then they snag and they're, they're just terrible. Now they feel sharp enough and really look so nice, but that's deceiving because they are worthless, and I, th I think I will throw them out, but I wanted to show them to you. But the one that I do like is from Germany, 
I don't see any name on it other than Germany. I like that type of spring that they used on poultry shears years ago. And this is so sharp, and it feels sharp, where the other one feels blunt. So, if I said something bad about Pakistan, I, I take it back except for this. This is a piece of junk, and I have seen a few others. But someone told me that a lot of the ones that they use in hospitals are from Pakistan, and some of them are one-time use because of uh, sterilizing them in germs, so they throw them away. And, of course, they bill you $900 for them. I received a very heavy package from Dennis Watson, and he's clear out in California. I'm glad it made it in one piece because the box did get rewrapped by the post office, so it was torn through a bit, but very heavy items. That doesn't surprise me that it tore through that thin cardboard. But rather than try to explain what this is with the pieces here, let me show you that it is a mount that will go on a workbench on which you can put your vise and you can raise the vise or lower it, move it in and out, and here's another one down on the other bench. I more than likely will be mounting this on a bench out in my garage, but the bench will be wood, so there probably will be a video on that at some time. So he sent me several nice pictures of how it's mounted, and he obviously does a nice job with CAD because there are the CAD drawings. One other one here someplace right there. Thank you, Dennis, very, very much for that. And probably the 20, yeah, it was 20 bucks to ship it. And he's one heck of a good welder. Look at those nice welds. And it's all painted up and ready to go. And the unpainted piece will have a flange on the top that will match the vise that I put on there. And it's heavy wall square tubing. I so appreciate it very much, and to all of you that sent me things, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure and watch my upcoming videos, many, many coming up during the summer. So this is Tubal Cain saying so long for now.